can't sense smell through film yet yet uh, but it smells really really bad right now in this area that we're at um, and that's because um, in the city of Vernon and then also in the city of Boyle Heights there's about four plants that are called rendering plants any roadkill that is found gets sent to those places any um, animals that get killed at uh, shelters get sent to these places um, and any dead animals can get sent to these rendering plants to get processed um, they get processed uh, to make gelatin, they get processed to make uh, makeup, makeup um, and other products that we might not have considered to have animal parts in them, they have them, right? And that's where they get processed to then sent to those companies where they get made. Uh, the reason why we smell the smell is because these facilities leave the carcasses and the dead bodies uh, outside exposed during the day. So we're standing in front of Excite Technologies. Excite Technologies was a battery lead recycler. Um, and so they would have the, they would bring in used batteries, like car batteries, for example, and then they would melt them down through a lead smelter. Um, but what was happening is that they weren't doing it appropriately. And this was since the 1920s through the 1940s, and it went through different ownership, but continued to be a lead smelter. And through, um, the smeltering there was so many decades worth of arsenic and lead that became part of our soil right so even though this area looks heavily industrial it's actually really really close to home in 2015 uh excite was shut down through community pressure we were told it couldn't be done it was done and now we are in the cleanup process which is another uphill battle because uh excite left basically without having to pay anything and so our communities are left with huge public health gaps um, that they have to address themselves. My name is Janet Valenzuela and we're here in Commerce, California at the Office of East York Communities for Environmental Justice. And the work that I do is I help coordinate our food justice work, which is also known as La Cosecha Colectiva. So it's a decentralized gardening program where our members that grow gardens that are edible, medicinal, and also native are able to, within community, exchange their produce and exchange their medicine, um, and also in a way to build a local food system. My name is Laura. I am a member and community organizer with East York Communities for Environmental Justice, working with communities in the East Side, Boyle Heights, East LA, and in the Southeast. Some of the issues they work on are on the, uh, our water, right? Our issues with our water and contaminated water. Um, some of those issues include the 710 freeway expansion, the Exide facility that we were able to shut down, but we're now currently in a cleanup process, uh, and oil refineries in West Long Beach for community members that are in West Long Beach as well. One of the East Yard founders, Bob Iola, he was actually alive when this used to be Japanese gardens and he saw the changes that happened for the city of commerce um, and how it impacted folks firsthand. Uh, and so the rail yards were constructed after um, World War II where Japanese were taken away and put into internment camps and that was what was taken advantage was the land for the rail yards. Um, and another boom in terms of the industry was after the NAFTA agreement was when these stadium lights went up and there was commerce coming through on a daily basis, which is what we see now. The 710 freeway that also is right next to this park um, and impacts about 13 communities uh, in its whole like expansion that's currently active, um, it's connected to the ports. And so those ports, uh, the Long Beach and the LA port combined, they get 40% of all goods for the entire U.S. Um, and how does it get to the rest of the U.S. is through these rail yards. Now we're standing in, um, in Nico's house. Um, she's an active member of East Yard. And we're here because um, we wanted to showcase a little bit of La Cosecha Colectiva, which is our decentralized uh, garden program here at East Yard. It actually began in 2007 with a conversation around a proposed project to build a Walmart. Um, and members were having a conversation, well, Walmart would be good here because one, um, Commerce is a city of over 13,000 residents, but they don't have access to a grocery store, right? They have to drive out of the community if they even own a car um, to get access to uh, produce. And oftentimes the grocery stores that are available in our communities are not, um, are, are not having, um, not just uh, safe, 
products, but sometimes not the best products. Uh, so this proposed project to build a Walmart uh, really led to the conversation around, yes, there's a Walmart, but there's also going to be a distribution center. And already with so much infrastructure around the goods movement in our communities, this would be another layer that adds to the contamination that we have here. And as people came to the conclusion that if local organic produce was what they needed access to, then why don't they just do it themselves? And so you see that through our environmental justice framework, La Cosecha Colectiva became an outlet where, uh, yes, uh, members were already growing and have been growing their own food for a really long time. So why not create a, um, a program that um, invites members to our work um, doing environmental justice, but at the same time addressing the food apartheid that exists among communities that are the most vulnerable to contamination here. So right now, um, you can find gardens throughout our East LA membership, around our South East LA membership, right, in Commerce and Bell Garden. Uh, and our Linwood membership, um, but also all the way out to West Long Beach where we have some of the gardens there. And so on a monthly basis, members uh, come together to not just work on their gardens, but also bring right the abundance that comes from, from what grows uh, and exchange it with other people in their, in their community. And hopefully um, we can establish a local food system that is not dependent on the global market um, that is then um, perpetuating these infrastructures around uh, contamination and and impacting our health.